Hello and welcome. This is a glitchy episode of Sisters of the Holy Fiber. This is episode 38. I hope you can hear us. My name is Devin, also known as Rambunctious Guy. And I'm Heather, also known as Tiny Kiwi. So grab your knitting or crochet and join us while we craft and chat and put up with horrible, horrible Skype internet connections. Bad, bad Bad, Skype. And welcome if you have uh, been around before, and welcome if you if this is your first time tuning in. We are glad to have you here. What have you been working on this week? Oh, uh, most of the doily. Let me show you my progress. Doily! Looks like a doily, so that's like a good sign, right? Yes, that is. This was I not know- on your to-do list, but that's okay. This was what? It was not on your to-do list of plans yeah. and things, but I love you. Yes, it is. This is the doily that I'm making for Chris's mom. Okay. It's on the list that you typed up, madam. I don't even I... remember how bad of a sister does that make me. So bad. <sighs> it's okay. Um, it, well, let me re-explain it since clearly you've forgotten. Um, I got a big gift card um, from my boyfriend's parents. So I'm making a doily for his mom as part of my thank you package. Since, uh, Hold it I sent to her some... camera. Mm. Yay. Yep. It's not looking too bad, and it's going to look a lot better once it gets locked aggressively. Nice. So I'm, I'm excited about that, because I've never made a doily, like, with thread weight kind of stuff before, mm-hmm. which is, you know, weird. I've done 10,000 other different kind of lacy things, but not an actual doily. So, huh. Be go. my first real doily that's made out of not worsted weight or something like that. I sent her a couple of worsted weight, like, um, pot holders and stuff, you know, like big stuff, and she really liked those. So that's why I'm making a doily, because I wouldn't make a doily for anyone who didn't want one. Let's put it that way. Um, I'm also... Oh, and for anyone who doesn't oh, appreciate it, you know, like, cause you've sent yeah. her stuff that she liked, you know, she's grateful, then you get more. Yes. If I give you exactly. things and you're not grateful, you don't get any more. Exactly. It's a true fact of the knitting world. Yes. Um, dad also gave me a canvas bag that he has. Um, he tried to take it to some kind of seamstress place. I have no idea where he really took it. Maybe it was like an alterations place and they said they'd have to take apart the whole bag to do the sewing that he wanted. He wanted um, pockets put in uh, for pens. Mm-hmm. Um, of course he did. Yes. Well, they would already has pockets, but he wanted different sized pockets. So they'd have to take the pockets out and redo them, basically. Mm-hmm. Of course. So I said, that's not really a problem. You don't have to take the whole bag apart. Just give it to me. I'll rip the seams out and sew it myself. So that's mm-hmm. what I've been doing. I've been busy ripping the seams on that. And we're going to hope that my sewing machine will actually sew through, like, two layers of canvas. Because if not, I get to send it to his friend that has, like, big, fancy, expensive quilting machines, and she's going to do it instead. (laughs) Yeah, her big, fancy (laughs) machines could do it. Yes. Um, My machine's pretty heavy duty, but I had trouble when I was sewing, like, two or three layers of duck cloth together. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I'm going to try it. Cool. Because... The price they quoted him was kind of a donk, and to say that you have to take all the seams out of a bag that probably costs five dollars to purchase is kind of ridiculous. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, so that's my projects that I'm working on. Cool. Anything else? FOs. I've got an FO. Yay! <gasps> Yay! Do you want to do that now, or do you want me to share my whips first? Oh, your whips first. Whips, whips, whips. Whips, whips, whips. Uh, so I was very good, and I cast on my owl. So um, I'm almost done with the row, and then I will stop knitting on it and show you. Okay, here they are. These are the first pair of socks that I'm making. Here, let me hold them this. Let's see, this way in the middle. There we go. These are sock toes. Yay, I'm doing two at a time. Uh, I haven't done two at a time in a really long time. And, um, I, I know I've done this before, but I can't remember when it was or what I was knitting two at a time. Right. On. So, uh, and this is my, but this was my first time ever doing the Sherman toe method. 
and mm -hmm. uh, they came out real nice. So I'm very happy with how they turned out, and they feel like they're going to feel nice against my toes, too. Like, there isn't... There's, like, a little bit of a seam. Like, I can feel a little bit of a seam on the inside, but <laughs> um, I think they'll be okay. And mm. they're a little bit pointy, so I think, like, maybe next time um, I won't go down to so few stitches here. Yeah. Oh, uh, what else about these? Oh, this is Zalra Ball yarn. I can't remember the colorway, but it's self-striping, so it's doing this pretty, like, pattern all on its own. And yeah, it's really pretty. It's so nice to work with and just, like, watch the color change, and I'm just like, yeah. I'm going to keep going until the color changes, you know? Yeah. So... Um, the two at a time, I'm not a no, I don't know if I'm a real big fan. Um, the, I will like it at the end because like when I'm done, I'll cast off and they'll both be done. And that okay. part, that moment will be nice that I don't have to cast on the second sock, but I'm not too sold because this part right here, mm -hmm. this in the middle right here, it's hard to get these stitches to be the right size like I either yank the yarn too much and these stitches are too small or mm -hmm. I don't yank it enough and they're too big and yeah I mean I'll probably get better at it as time goes on but um I just am kind of annoyed like fiddling with it so yeah uh the other thing that I worked on I went uh with some friends to uh go to a lookout point and they were doing like photography and um uh, painting like they brought like watercolor stuff with them and I brought a bunch of yeah, odd oddballs and stuff and I thought I would try and like knit like what I saw but mm -hmm. I like cast on way too many stitches so all I, <laughs> all I have is like the bottom part <laughs> of what I did so this oh there's a yarn in the middle this down here is like where the rocks stuff were there were rocky bits and like um some of it was orange here, I'll get closer. Mm -hmm. And then there, then it started, like, the bushes view and um, over there. And then, like, there was a bush that was flowering. So, like, I put it, I, like, double knit, not double knitted. I knitted with um, two yarns at once right here with the, mm -hmm. the little flowering bits. But um, I've never done this before, and I thought I would just try it. And I'm, like, not that entranced with how it turned out. It kind of looks dumb. But, um... I don't think so. I completely disagree with you. I'm thinking... I'm sitting over here thinking it looks really cool. Well, I I mean, I just... You know me. I'm very, like... Yeah. I know. It um, doesn't seem like a you thing. It, yeah, see? That's what I mean. Like, I mean, I, I don't... I know people who do this kind of thing, and it turns out really pretty, and I think that I am just, like, I need more... I need a bigger color palette so that it can look like what I saw, you know? But I, that yeah, was but part of the exercise is to be constrained by what I had right. with me, you know? Um, yeah. And so it was a good little exercise, but um, I'll turn this in for a partial, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not going to finish it, I don't think. And it was just kind of fun. It was also fun to just play with the yarn because I, um, like here I knit with, two colors to try and get some of this because there were some of the bushes were like this dark green color but some of the leaves were young so they were light green so I tried you know knitting yeah. two at a time you know so like that kind of stuff playing around with it was fun and you can't really see in the video but some of it it was like a really foggy day so I put some gray in with the green Aww. here too that's cool. so like that kind of th th that kind of interpretation of what we were looking at was kind of fun to do and and it's something different than you usually do because you're usually yes. very formulaic with your yes. knitting. So breaking away from that is a good practice. Like I did some freeform crochet one time, and even though it came out as nothing useful at all, it was really a fun experience, you know, and yeah. kind of opened your mind to the fact that you don't have to be, you know, knitting flat, knitting a circle, you know, like you can yeah. break out of that, you know, and it reminds you. Yeah, and so, and it was, like, what you were just saying, like, it was the experience of it, you know, and I knew that, like, my finished object, the finished object was not really the point. Right. Like, it was really kind of the exercise in, like, like, these yarns, their weights are radically different, you know. Yeah. Um, and 
just kind of like seeing what would happen and being inspired by what I was looking at. And yeah. So, um, and now that I think about it, I might just cast it off and call it a bookmark and be done with it, you know? Yeah, why not? So, and it's a good reminder of, uh, you know, your experience that day too, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so that was kind of fun and something else that I embarked on an adventure. Yeah. Yay. Uh, that's it for me. I haven't finished anything. I don't, okay. not that I can remember. Okay. Our next segment is hyperventilate. I'm going to start because no! I'm really excited. No, wait. Uh. You're too excited. I have a finished object. Oh, I forgot. I just steamrolled right over that because I'm so used to me not finishing anything and you finish. Oh, I never finish anything. I think that's why you get used to me not having anything. But this was an no. accidental thing. Okay. Okay. Go, go, go. I'm too, I was too excited. Almost jumped ahead. Not hyperventilate. We're in FOs now. Yeah. So. Our car, actually, every car that I ever get in and out of shocks me, like, all the time, mm-hmm. unless it's, you know, no, it, it always happens to me, um, and so sometimes it happens to the guy as well, and so he looked up a do-it-yourself, like, anti-static device, you know, because they have some fancy ones that you could buy at, like, Super Auto Box or whatever, and you hold the dolphin to your car or whatever, and his nose lights up to discharge the static or, you know, something yes, like that. Yes, you gave yeah. me that dolphin, and I had it for a long, long time until he fell off my keys. Aww. And I lost it. Aww. Well, and now we don't have a super auto box anywhere around. I'm not even sure they're still in the U.S. anywhere. But um, finding one of those here has been, let's just say it's not going to happen. So he looked up how, like a YouTube on how to make one yourself. Uh huh. Um, and all you need is two, what is it? 10, 10 M ohm. What's M's? I don't know. Some kind of measuring device, I'm, ass- I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Anyway, they're resistors. He looked up the right kind. I don't uh-huh. even remember what these really are. Fourth of a watt. Hold it real close to your camera and nice and still. They're just like little electronics parts. Huh. Yep. Cool. Um, that was about the smallest pack you could buy of them. How many in there? Like a hundred or something? <laughs> I don't know. Like a bagillion. Uh-huh. So we had fun uh, playing around with uh, with the resistors, and you're supposed to make it with screws, two screws. Uh, with two resistors in between, and then you put a plastic straw, like, you know, put it all in a plastic straw. So, uh, we didn't really have any screws that were the right size, Uh and it was kind of, kind of a hectic experience trying to find something that was, like, appropriately sized. We we cut a lot of things apart trying Mm -hmm. to make stuff, Mm -hmm. so that was kind of fun. Um, I, I ended up making, this is my first one, out of a uh, mechanical pencil. How I took cool! The, I took the insides out and just used, I'm not sure that these are conductive, the ends. Uh-huh. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to find out, because I don't have a, um, like a way to measure whether they're static or not, because that's uh-huh. a completely different project. So, um... So you just have been, to, like, touch it to the car and then touch the car and then... Yeah, pretty much. Eventually, if you've uh, done that enough and not gotten shocked, then you know it worked. And it, it works, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So inside, uh, I've got, uh, this one actually has three resistors, even though I'm only supposed to use two because it wasn't long enough and I didn't want to cut the pen down and I was lazy. Uh-huh. So this one was really tying bits and bobs together, trying to make it work. So the second one, this is just a big pen that I uh, cut apart, and it has two bolts. In the end. Nice. So the wire touches one end of the bolt, and then it goes to one of the resistors that, you know, is attached to the other resistor and then touches the other end of the bolt. So you hold it, and you're touching one of the metal pieces, uh-huh. and then you touch the other one to the car or whatever you're trying to, you know, uh, get rid of the static on. Uh-huh. So it's supposed to keep you from getting shocked and discharge the charge. So we'll see. I think this one's more promising, although because it has bolts. Right. It's, right. like, heavy, so I don't think anyone would practically want to use this. But since I get shocked so much, I will totally keep this in the car anyway, because I get shocked, like, a whole heck of a lot. I'm never sure why. I'm just very staticky. I don't know. I do that, too. I end up getting out of the car, and, like, I use my elbow. 
Yeah, it's bad when, like, I shock myself, and then I shock myself again, because I didn't discharge enough of it the first time around. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just very staticky. So that was exciting. of do-it-yourself sure. things. Yeah, they're fun. You know, it was really fun, and the, the whole pack of, like, 100 resistors or whatever was, like, four bucks or something. Right. You know, right. and the rest is just stuff we had lying around the house, so it was a very fun, you know, attempt at, at that kind of stuff. Cool. Uh, we might uh, try to find some proper-looking screws in the proper size screws in the garage to make a, <laughs> a smaller, more portable version. But yes, we'll see. But I'm very excited that it that it turned out. Hopefully, it will work. Nice. Yay. I hope so too. Hyperventilate. Wait. What? No. No, because your do-it-yourself oh. project made me go on a tangent. Here I go. <laughs> so. Oh, no. My lovely wife looked at me one day and she's like, could you make me a quail hat? And I'm like, a quail hat? Like, you want, like, a beanie with a dingley? And she's like, yeah! And I was like, do you want a beanie that looks like a quail with a dingley? And she's like, no, it's just a dingley. She, like, wants a dingley on the top of her head. So then I was thinking about like hats that I could put dinglies on, you know, or like how to make the dingly thing. Right. And then I remembered that in my, I have a book on, um, Amigurumi knits by Hansi Singh. Uh-huh. And she has a deep sea angler fish in there and deep sea angler fish have these dingly things. Right. So one person made a deep sea angler fish and they put a light in the end. Like they got a bunch of stuff, like not a bunch, not that much stuff from, um, from Radio Shack and made a little light at the end of their knitting thing. So now they have a deep sea angler fish with a light on it. And then, of course, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have to make her a hat with a dingley on it that lights up because, <laughs> oh, my God, how cute would that be? And then yeah, the two of awesome. you can wear your light up hats together and it'll be yes. wonderful. Yes. I won't be the only weirdo in a weird hat anymore. <laughs> no. So, um. Uh, Anyway, yes, that that we were talking about right. making things with electrical things that made me think of that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very exciting. On to hyperventilate. Here I go. Okay, um, go for it. I've shared about this game before, but I'm playing it again. This is Legend of Mana, and mm-hmm. uh, it's by SquareSoft. Uh, let's see if I can find a year. 1999. Uh, mm. It's a PS2 game, and uh, you can play as two different characters. Like when you sign sign up when you log in for your first time to a game um you can choose one of two characters to be uh the thing that i just found out about though is that you can have pets in this game so when i first started playing this game i did not play with a walkthrough so i was just like wandering around and like randomly doing things and i totally missed the cut scene like that you're supposed to do in the beginning for getting pets so, like, I didn't have pets this whole time. And now I'm, like, all about it because I don't know. I'm just I'm like, oh, I get a pet. I get a pet. I get a pet. <laughs> so um, I've been having a lot of fun playing that. And the other fun thing about that game that I also figured out is, like, let's say you started two save games. Mm-hmm. You can go in and load the data from your other game, and somebody can play with you on your other load file. Hmm. So, like, you can level up two characters and then have them play in the same game. That's pretty cool. So, like, I mean, two different... Yeah, so, anyway, it sounds like fun, and it sounds like I'm going to be sinking a lot of time into this game. I've uh, yes. Yesterday, I woke up in pain... For uh, whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I was awake very early in the morning. And I was like, I'm going to play video games. And so I saved over my oldest file. And I was like, oh, well, I can start over now. <laughs> Guess I'm going to do it the right way. So then I started a new game. And I'm pretty much back to where I was before. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm feeling about. Do you have anything? Um, is that a PS1 or PS2 game? PS. Oh, you're right. It is PS1. I'm playing Just... it on my PS2, so I feel like it's PS2, but it's a PS1. Okay. Just checking. You're right. Yes. yes. Um, what am I playing? I'm playing a little bit of everything because I finally have almost all of my game systems hooked up. Um, I have 
my Wii and my PlayStation 2 and my uh, original Xbox hooked up. Um, so now that I have my Xbox, I'm like going through all my Xbox games, like playing things that I, you know, set aside or half finished or whatever. So I'm, uh, I really want to get the boyfriend to play Halo 2 with me. So I played some of that trying to get familiar with the controls so that I can kill him a lot. Uh huh. Yes. That's the plan. Yes. Uh, he plays Unreal Tournament, which is, uh, now that I've watched him play it, I can say, like, wow, Halo is totally based on Unreal Tournament, you know, which is also probably based on, oh, I don't even know. I don't know what order things came out, so it's just a lot of very similar gameplay. I think he would like it. I'm trying to convince him to play. Uh, the problem is, is he's a kind of a PC gamer, so getting him to use the console controls has been kind of eh, uh-huh. you know? He's like, it's faster on the PC. Oh, I can do this on the PC. Oh, I can do that on the PC. And I'm like, well, then put it in your PC. <laughs> anyway, I've been having fun. Um, I play. I started playing this game that I totally bought like ages ago and then never started. Because <gasps> I, you know, do that. Thief! Deadly Shadows! This is the first one in the Thief. I think it's a trilogy now. Or maybe they're on... I don't even know what number they're on. Uh-huh. Uh, but that's kind of exciting. Uh, it seems like it's going to go a little bit fantastical. Like, it's not really just about being a thief. I think there's magic and things going on in the undead and whatever. So that should be weird. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to stick with this, because uh, it seems like it might be a little tough for me. Uh-huh. Like, it's okay right now, but just like with Ninja Gaiden, like, I can barely get through the first, like, the intro level. Which is another game that I tried to play. Let me grab that one. Uh, not the original Ninja Gaiden, but the Xbox version. I think it originally came out on... God, was it NES or something? I don't remember. But this game is so hard. So hard. I played a little bit of it in the store, and I was really enthralled with the gameplay. Uh-huh. It seemed like it would be very fun, so I purchased it. Right. And then I tried to get, you know, then I actually played it and then got to the first boss and was like, I can't even do the first boss. This game is not going to go very well. So I ended up watching a friend of mine play through quite a bit of it because he was a much better game of a gamer. Uh-huh. Uh, but then he just kind of got tired of it and didn't play. So now I don't know what to do. I think I should just sell that game because I can't play it. It's too yeah. hard for me. Yeah. I just yeah. can't handle it, you know? Yeah. Which is yeah. really sad. I'd love to be able to play it, but what are you gonna do? sometimes you... just ain't got the skill. So, yeah, just going through all those games, all my old games, playing, 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 trying to recruit the boyfriend into playing more video games. Yay! More recruits! <laughs> Yay! Old video games. Woohoo! All right, next segment. You said you had your party today. I do. Um, I was listening to uh, Metric. I'm not sure if I've ever talked about them before, so bear with me, because I really love them. Um, they're a band I come back to quite a lot, uh-huh. because pretty much all of their songs I will listen to. Mm-hmm. I really mm-hmm. like them. They're Canadian, well, I think they call themselves rock, but they're more like electro-pop or something. Uh-huh. Electro-pop rock? <laughs> I don't know. They're really pop awesome. Pop rocks. No, sorry. Pop rocks. Yeah. Um, she's a really good musician, I think, the mm-hmm. lead singer. Mm-hmm. So, um, I really like what she comes up with, or what they come up with. Mm-hmm. Um, let me, I wrote a couple of titles down, because, like I said, I'll listen to anything. Um, Help I'm Alive has a really good catchy beat. Uh-huh. So I think that's a good song to get your feet wet with, if you've never heard of anything by them before. And then they uh-huh. also did a song in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Um, it was that movie that came out a while ago, mm-hmm. based on the comic. Um, the song is Black Sheep. And if you look for that one, you'll have to be careful because um, some of the vocals are Emily the singer in Metric, and some of them are um, the actress that they got to play in the movie. And they're both good versions. It's just, I really like Metric. So check them out! Fun! Do you have any music? Uh, no, not for this week. Okay. How about I Spy-ish stuff? Moving right along. Uh, you know, I haven't been out, and I know you have something exciting to share, so I'm going to let you go. This should really be in hyperventilate, because I'm, like, so excited to share this with you. So, it was just raining here, and I was, like, the little weirdo I am, out with a little piece of paper saving worms. 
off the sidewalk. Yes. Because that's what we do. And, yes, I was a weird child. We um, were, you were, we were. We were out there yeah. with our jar, like, little, be- putting leaves in jars. And like, come here, worms. It's going to be okay. Was, You're going <laughs> to And then, then I was the kid in high school who was like, ooh, I can freak out all the girls if I just pick up a worm. And I would pick up a worm and I'd go freak out all the girls. And it was really fun. Yeah. It was really funny. Yeah, I did that in elementary because it would be like the boys would be like, Here's a worm, aren't you afraid? And I would hold it and they were and then they'd get all weirded out like that I was like, You were just holding it. No, I'm but holding I, it and I don't care. Exactly. Yep. Anyway. anyway, so I it was kind of dark and I don't have great night vision, so there was a the first worm that I saved was really long. It's like the longest earthworm I've seen in a long time. Uh, and then, so the second one, I poked his little, uh, rear end and trying to get him onto the paper. Cause this was just a real quick save. Cause I was like, I'm not going to spend all day hunting down worms. This was yeah. just the ones that were in the walkway, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And his, it, it just kind of went blurb, you know, and it wasn't very active. So I was like, oh no, he's dying. He's all right. Me. Well, I'll try to save him anyway, you know, cause mm-hmm. that's how I do Anyway, so then I got closer and I realized, oh, he his front end doesn't look like his back end. This is not a worm. So I was like, what in the heck are you, little guy? He had these big old bulbous eyes. Big bulbous eyes. He was very cute. And his, he had little little legs. So adorable. So I finally, I had no clue what he really was. So I looked him up in my <clears throat> natural, no natural, National Audubon Society Field Guide to California. Because like you do. Like it is in, like, yeah, and Satina. So that's like it's part of its scientific name. It doesn't really have a common name. So clearly, I'm going to show you because he's super cute. And this picture does oh. not do him justice. His eyes were like uh big, like mm-hmm. the size of my finger big. They were mm-hmm. like little black BBs on his face. Adorable. We're seeing Ooh, everything. <laughs> yes, and look at his little tiny feet. Let me tell you, oh, these little tip tappers are super cute in real life. Tipper tappers, so tiny. He, it almost looks like he doesn't have legs because they were so tiny. Oh my gosh! And his tail was longer than this guy too. It was like super long. For the balance. For the balance. I guess. Anyway, so it says he's part of the lungless salamander family. Anyway, he didn't seem like he was doing too good, so I put him kind of in a spot where he could either crawl into wet or crawl into a dry area. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because I wasn't sure if he was somebody who needed to stay moist. <laughs> so I, I put him kind of in a mid mid zone. So hopefully he got someplace safe and the cat didn't need him. So <laughs> there around here. Yeah, who knows? That so that was my right. exciting find of the day. I'm super excited to have seen that. And I have never seen something like that before. So that was... Totes exciting. Yes, that is very that exciting. Is exciting. You can see why I'm geeking out. It, I just wish I wish you were there. I wish I could have taken a picture, but it was like so dark and my camera's been messing up. So like whatever. But that's okay. But that's, his eyes, big black eyes, like this. They were seriously like, like this. Yeah, and I he, can imagine. Boobies, so boobies. <laughs> anyway, so that's it for my eye spy. Um, I'm sure I've seen other things, but that was the thing that I was like, but that's so definitely about. like, ah. yeah, that's a highlight of the I spy experience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, we do have enough time for, so we saved a brainy moment thing for the end in case we had time for it. And we do. So you're on. Um, real quick though. I wanted to say about brooms oh, yeah. there. The brooms are due on the 14th, which is like oh. two days from now. Yes. So I may not get that proposed in time. I don't know. Might happen, might not. Yeah. We'll see. Because I have about a billion other things that I've been trying to do. So, we are now, now, in case you don't know what we're talking about, we are now talking about our Harry Potter Knit Crochet House Cup. And yes. uh, the order missions. If you want to do an order mission, your brooms are due in two days. I think yes. Two days. Yeah. Two days. And owl I'm, proposals are now due on the 21st. Oh, so You wow. don't have the whole month. You have until the 21st to propose I had, no, I had no idea. I mean, it's a good thing I'm not doing an owl. Otherwise, I'd be like, oh, my gosh, I have no time. Yeah. So, um, 
I guess that makes sense. They've been really overloaded, you know? Yeah, and then the other thing, too, is that it's, um, apparently that's the same date for new proposals. So it all, like, it makes it all the same, you know? Yeah, makes it easy for everyone. I'm all down for that. So, brainy moments, I guess. Yes. So, brainy Um, moments at the end today. So, what I had trouble with was I have a brand new monitor, and all it has is VGA in and HDMI in. Which are the newfangled, well, VGA is not, but uh, the HDMI is like the newest kind of input, you know, very classy. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, all of my systems use composite. Is it composite? Oh, I don't know. Component, composite, I get them mixed up. It's one of the ones. Uh-huh. I always write, have to write it down because the words are so similar. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. It's the red, white, yellow system. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So I had to get a converter box that will let me go from my old systems. You wouldn't think old, the Wii is considered an old system, but ta-da! So that's how I managed to hook up my Xbox and my PlayStation and all that to my brand new monitor um, by buying this converter box, because you can't just use a cord and go from one to the other. It doesn't really work that way. So how, where did you find this converter box? This converter box. I got this guy on Amazon, and I hate to buy things on Amazon, but I scoured the internet for, like, weeks trying to find, like, a reputable source to buy something like this. There was none. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I just went basically with one of the cheaper ones I could find on Amazon. Mm-hmm. I think this was 22 bucks, and it just comes with a USB power cord. Uh, very simple. HDMI out. Got to make sure you're going the right way because some of the input outputs are switched when you're yeah, ordering it. Yeah. Anyway, it works. You know, awesome. it does the job. I'm able to play the games. Um, some of the older games that are on, like, PS2 are kind of fuzzy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's not very good picture quality. Um, and that's just a lot of the problem we have because I'm pretty sure that it's not upscaling properly and I don't know enough about it to go really into, you know digital versus analog, but, um, and all those problems, but it works. Long story short, it made my old systems work on my brand new monitor. And so I'm happy. I don't have very high requirements for, uh, my video as long as I can play it. Yeah. I was happy. So this would not be something if you not uh, be a solution. If you are a hardcore gamer, you would not like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you're just like, you're a hardcore gamer, gamer, like we are, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed with some of it, but not enough to not play it. Let's there put it that go. way. Um, and obviously some of the things, some of the nicer games on Xbox or on Wii look nicer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's just how it is. So uh, it's a HDMI upscaler. Just make sure that you get your um, input-output correct and that you're ordering the right thing that you want because component and composite are completely different uh, systems. One has four cords, one has three, and the colors are different. So good story, look at the colors if you can't figure it out, and definitely double check in the words that it's on the little selling things because sometimes the pictures were not what they were selling, like actually selling. Good, good. So that's why it took me weeks to find something. It was an experience, I tell you. But I'm glad that you found something. Oh, yeah, and it works. You know, um, unfortunately, the Xbox doesn't have a USB plug for to plug this guy in for his little external power. So I have him all kind of, like, rigged up with just... Um, I have him plugged into my Nook plug because my Nook has a USB. Yeah, it's probably not the best choice of things to do, but, like, this thing doesn't have any of its power requirements on it, so I don't even know what what to plug it into other than USB. So, right, it works. Right. We'll hope that it doesn't fry it, because I figured out of all the things, if it fries my Nook thing, that's the most replaceable. There you go. There you, you know? So, that was exciting. I'm glad that you I, found something. Yep. I think that's it for this week, unless you have anything else. Um, no, that's it for me. I told you about the crazy hat idea. That'll be really fun if I end up doing that. (laughs) I want to see that if you do that. Oh, I will. I'll wear it the whole episode. (laughs) That's going to be really distracting and awesome. Yes. Not going to lie. So it would be fun. Um, yeah, I think that's it for us tonight. Okay. 
Thanks for joining us, guys, and hopefully our video quality went up as we went along. We'll see. Hopefully. We'll see. Bye. I'm a llama, I'm on your sock, I'm a llama sock.